Okay. I think we're good now. Thank you. Um, thank you for coming online. God bless everybody. Once you join, you share immediately. Let's get the show on and keep the Fate of our struggle. God bless everybody for joining. Thank you for coming on. Thank you, thank you. We'll start talking as usual as soon as we have 500 persons, and that should be done uh, in the next two, three, or five minutes. We should be okay. Uh, you know, uh, of course, we sometimes we have to come. Uh, unannounced so if you join immediately please share happy sunday to all of you who are joining on live have a wonderful sunday come on live and invite everybody let's hit the show today we have a lot of things we'll be talking about we have this very special message to all FACO and southwest chiefs to the university communities of anglophone uh cameroons or southern cameroons we of course have a whole lot of things i will be talking today uh, a big shout out to all those of you who are joining from Grand Zero. Uh, God bless you. Happy Sunday, Henry. Happy Sunday, Ashutako. All of you who are joining, have a very pleasant Sunday while you join. And uh, we hope to share a couple of things today, you know, for the good of the, of the movement. It is our responsibility uh, to get everything straight up. All right. So we already have quite a number that's joining the, li in the li last. Li less than just a few seconds so we, we expect to to get everybody on board because that is the spirit and uh, that's exactly what we want to see uh happy sunday once more thank you for joining we know you know this is a pretty new account and all those of you who are joining we thank you guys for uh your strength for the steadfastness in promoting the revolution of our movement i think that is the spirit we want uh, Clarice, thank you for coming on live. Everybody, please, when you join, once you join, you invite friends so that we can get the show on. Uh, my old account is still blocked from doing live videos. Uh, we're going to work that up soon, and we hope it gets well as soon as possible. Uh, a big shout out to all those of you watching from Limbe. If you're watching from Limbe, this is um, a very special moment for you. Uh, no, Limbe is very hot, a lot of tension. That was the last FACO town that we shut down. And that's how it's going to be across the national territory. When I talk about the national territory, I'm talking about uh, Southern Cameroons. All right, good day, good evening, good afternoon, good morning, wherever you're watching from. A, a patriotic salute to Bo Sidoni, uh, my lady sister from uh, Gokwetunja County. Uh, of course, we've heard what has happened in Dock. I'm sure you must have read that from the official page of National Telegraph about the gendarme officer or gendarmerie officer that was killed in Dub. Please, if you join, I always say that if you join, you have the responsibility to like, share, and invite friends. And I talk share, share extensively so that we can have everybody on board. That is a little secret to get the show on. I'll start talking as soon as we have 500 persons, and that should be in a couple of minutes. Excuse me. All right, so as soon as we have 500 persons, we'll start the show. We know usually uh, it's a Sunday and pretty late on Grand Zero, but we need to see everybody on board. We'll talk extensively on uh, the useless and uh, crazy war that Mr. Beer has plunged us into and that we must fight till the end because that is our responsibility. Every Southern Cameroonian has the responsibility to fight this war till the end. You have to fight till the logical conclusion because it is your human right to defend yourselves. It is uh, important for you to understand why you fight. It is also necessary for those who don't want to fight to understand why they must fight. And it remains primordial as well for every Southern Cameroonian who is still marking, uh, you know, steps behind to understand the necessity of this movement. You know, I think Southern Cameroon 
uh, remains one of those countries that is simply fighting to restore its uh, statehood. We are not fighting to separate. We are fighting for restoration. And it is important for everybody to understand this particular fact. That is why Mr. Bia has kept us in bondage for as long as he became president. We have not seen any development, uh, you know, tangible development to write home with in southern Cameroon. And so it is now your singular responsibility to fight until you get your country back because it is your legitimate right it is backed by international laws and uh, in a revolution or movement like this it remains necessary for you to understand the reason why you're fighting and today i'm going to let you know that particular aspect uh, of the fight because you know uh, in, in a re revolution of this magnitude uh, a lot of people still think that it is a joke and uh, despite the fact that they are working tooth and nail to ensure that they bring some kind of divide and rule principle in order to turn the southwesterners against the northwesterners. I'm going to be saying this today. Fortunately, I'm the one who published the list on the Boya chiefs that were to be arrested, and uh, some people have been messed up. You know, they messed up themselves by trying to use that list to play a divide and rule, possibly because they think that. Uh, this cannot be explained to the population. But we always have the time to explain to our people what exactly is going on. So if you join, you share extensively why I always also try to, you know, to, to share as well. And we, we hope that um, no matter what happens, uh, the day is going to come when we all get to Boya and start celebrating. So if you join, you share extensively. That is your responsibility. We'll start the show in exactly three minutes when we must have had at least 500 people and uh, you know we'll, we'll kick off the show and talk officially on the things that we need to talk about because uh, it is always important for all those of you who are watching from DOP it's a big shout out to all of you if you're watching from anywhere around Kupe Maninguba I still want to say senior patriotic salute because um, you know uh, it is our responsibility to remind our compatriots of how much we have them at heart because uh, a time will come when we will depend on the, the love we have for each other in order to rebuild our country. It, the understanding we have for everybody is certainly what is going to push our movement ahead. Uh, we understand that there's been a lot of things that have been happening in uh, Manfe, the Manfe main market that I'm also going to be addressing today. And uh, we will not also forget that uh, a lot of things are happening with people's ID cards. And we'll also remind people of the situation, the family that was killed in Njiniki Jem, the other family in Ofen Tiben, and the pastor and one congregant that, was, uh, that were killed in Batiba. So we're going to talk about all those things, and uh, I will also uh, make mention of the necessity for all those of you on Zero to understand that you have an extra capacity to shut down the entire La Republic and parts of southern Cameroons because that is your responsibility, that is your right, that is exactly what you ought to do. And I tell you verily that until you understand the reason why you must shut down that bloody country uh, held by Mr. Bia, you, you wouldn't understand the reason why you're fighting. And you know, the fight of a country as already independent as ours only tells us that it is our responsibility to push the fight right to a logical conclusion. A lot of people have come up to, uh, you know, few persons, though, have come up to uh, cause divide and rule. But I want to ask you one very important question, that all these people that come up to talk against the movement, that come up to preach a kind of graffiti and, uh, you know, uh, 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 buying this stuff and all of that mix, I'm talking about the Franklin Jumez and the rest, Ask yourself one big question. When have these people ever questioned the burning of Mami Api? If you see the, anywhere that they have condemned the Cameroon government, the government of Mr. Bia, then you can now say that those people are talking from their senses. Ask yourself that have these people 
ever condemned the killing of the pastor in Batibo or the village or the killings in the village of in Open Tiben? Have they ever condemned those? If you ask yourself those questions, then you will now have a logical reason. You will become very objective in your assessment and you would understand exactly why there is need for you to kick out the BR regime. We will start soonest to talk on the very important issues that we have on our list. And uh, we hope that as soon as you join, you have to share, you know, this is a new account. You have to share very extensively so that everybody on Grand Zero would have to watch this show. It's 17 minutes after 9 p.m. on Grand Zero. And we're extremely very glad with the number of people who have already come on live, given that it's a new account. As soon as you join, you share. It is your responsibility. I always say this. Once you join, you share. And uh, remember one thing, that while you stay online, you have the responsibility to push out these survivor messages to uh, our population. You must have seen that the Minister of Defense, Betty Asomo, has just come out from a very crucial meeting in Van in Yaoundé. They just held a meeting today. It is not any time, every time that they hold a meeting on Sunday. And uh, my sources at the Ministry of Defense have leaked out to me exactly some of the things that they discussed in that meeting. I have I've received an audio from that meeting and the entire discussion that I would want to keep for archive sake. But today I'll be unleashing to the population. It's like a missile. You know, the Ministry of Defense has now given fresh orders to generals governors and Jews of various localities to implement what will become worse than Rwanda on the people of southern Cameroon. And uh, normally I was not going to do a live show today, but uh, because of that particular meeting and other things, I said no, I was going to come live. I plan on doing something special tomorrow, but, <clears throat> excuse me, The show is predominantly triggered by the antics of the Defense Minister Joseph Betty Asomu, who came back from Ekumo Ekombe in Bongé subdivision, in Meme division, and from Batibo in Momo, disgraced and embarrassed. They are, all, they are all now very shocked that the last town standing in the southwest has fallen. That is Victoria. But while you hold these meetings, I want to say one very important thing here in my name as Eric Tator, that there is a small promise I have for Mr. Bia and his cohorts in Yaoundé. Because a lot of them think that they are going to have an easy ride with the election that they have announced in uh, October, on October 7th. And that is why they have held this meeting, giving very specific and firm instructions to army generals, to ensure that they do what they know how to do best. But as God has it, we always have people inside the defense ministry who would obviously leak out very intelligent and sophisticated information to us, to some of us who are privileged to, you know, to have the capacity to keep their secrets. And this is what I'm going to tell everybody on Grand Zero. If you take it lightly, you'll be killed. And if you are killed, you'll be buried. Be, you can be buried, but you can also be buried honorably. And how can you be buried honorably? Because in war, when you are at war, everything is possible. And you only have yourself to blame once you refuse to stand up to the challenges of a warring situation. That is why I want to say that all Southern Cameroonians are blessed to have activists online who put their lives on the line to preach survival messages and to give them very hardcore information from sources that are very, very, very reliable. So with this set, ladies and gentlemen, fellow Ambazonians, I want to say that the Minister of Defense has simply put in place a new strategy that will bury La Republic. Although uh, he would think that the orders will be carried out, you know, stricto sensus as in the world, you know, uh, Mr. Betty Asomo will be shocked that there is nothing that they can discuss within the ranks of the Ministry of Defense that 
we will not know. We will always get this information. We will get it with videos and audios because we have planted, even the minister himself, he speaks and reports to us directly because we know how to get out all of this information. Why I start this show, I want to say a big shout out to those who are watching from Bamenda, especially the Birit family of students in Bambili, and to also say that uh, it is important uh, that uh, we know the facts about the things that happen, especially after publication. I want to also say that the, the, the situation in, in Bambili is actually one of the worst kind of genocide irrespective of where it took place. I have gotten very confirmed information from one of the students and another person who, who es managed to escape that uh, looting in uh, Bambili or that raid from the military as to the exact place that that uh, particular incident took place. I want to say that I have confirmed, you know that as a, as a, an, a communicator, you obviously, it is important that the right information goes out there. Uh, reason why, after my uh, verification, it has not changed the fact that the military shot that guy while he begged for his life. He was a student that was shot, and of course, but where he was shot to is an issue because a lot of tempers are going on. However, however, I endorse the message of my brother, friend, and colleague, Mark Barita, calling for the arrest of whosoever who has stayed quiet about the issue. But I also want to say that we should understand that La Republic is also trying to play politics with the death of those students, those students of the University of, uh, of Bamenda. You know, the, uh, the vice chancellor can be very implicated because of the message that has gone out there. But where were these students shot and killed? That is the question. Where were these students shot and killed? It is exactly the question. I have I have, I have had confirmed information that these students were not killed in the school hostel. They were actually, you know, uh, uh, killed in a nightclub. And this is where it, is, it makes the whole matter worse for a Cameroon, for a soldier. It's, even, it's worse than killing those students in a, in, a, in a hostel. Let me explain to you why it's worse. You know, those students were killed. Let me get this. Um, let me get this very, very straight. You know that when a, a, a soldier is supposed to protect civilians, and um, when you kill students on campus, I, I want to think that I don't understand. It sounds funny though, but when you kill students in a position where they need more protection, that becomes the height of genocide. It becomes very much more intentional, you know. These, those students were killed in a Lissam hotel, in a nightclub rather, in a, in a Lissam nightclub uh, that serves as a hotel. They say it's located about at about uh, the Bokom petrol station before the police station. That's where the, 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 the military actually picked up those students and executed those innocent students in a nightclub, in a nightclub known as uh, a Lissam nightclub. That information is confirmed because I've talked to some students and um, they, they were not killed in a hostel. They were killed, they were removed from the nightclub. Now, let me tell you the implication of this kind of action. Uh, it would have been better if they killed those students in a hostel, which in which case is even worse. But it is, it is despicable that student, the military is supposed to protect these students. And then they meet students after they, they have written their exams. As I got that information, those students were removed. They came and and push that nightclub. They remove those students, and then, as you read from my work, they, 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 this particular student showed his ID card, begged for his life. It is your right to go about, you know, those are social amenities. That is, listen, that is just to show you the level of the level of the genocide that students do no longer have the right to enjoy themselves. That is where we have the, that's the biggest problem in this in this in this whole. Bia, bia, bia gang. You remove students from the nightclub. They show you, means that the students are aware. They are aware that they have to move with their ID cards. And they were moving with their ID cards. Somebody moves with their ID card. And then you drag the student, you, you get into a nightclub. You disrupt a business that is paying taxes to a government 
that is using the same money to kill a people. You, you select students. Students, because of their ages, you pull them out of the nightclub. And then after showing you the ID cards, you still decided to kill the students. I want to clap <laughs> to the Cameroon military. And just so that you know, I, I wanted to clear this fact because it was not in a hostel. It is important for me, per my investigation. It wasn't in a hostel. It was in the nightclub known as Elisam. That is the nightclub which also serves as a hotel beside the Bokom petrol station. Now, when you please, if you join, you share, because I want to pass this very clear message. I want to pass this clear message that people should understand one thing, that the soldiers have been ordered. Now, there are French orders that are coming from the Ministry of Defense. Betty Asomo, I would say this, when we, I will pass this information about Betty Asomo, we will have at least 1,000 people watching live. We already have close to that figure. So invite everybody to come online. I will say other things while we get to that. Now, what I want to say is that, I said the last time, and as, I'm still going to say it, that as students, you already know that you are being targeted. And so you have, you have the mandate. Listen to me very well, please. You are listening from Grand Zero. Everybody who is listening. You have the mandate, the legal and legitimate mandate to arm yourselves. Now you have the mandate to join restoration forces. It is every child, student, pupils, you have to keep saying, I'm saying these things over and over and over and over again because of the necessity of the matter. If you don't get arms, you'll be killed. That one is certain. There's a new order from the Ministry of Defense. Now, we have to, because they want to ensure that Bia becomes president again. That one is something that they have stamped, that it must happen. So, because they want to keep Bia in power desperately, they want to ensure that everybody who stands on the way be killed. And only one group of persons stand on their way. That group is a the community of Southern Cameroon. The reason why they have not paid some scumbags, they have paid some non-entities to start this divide and who calling some people graffiti and calling some people bangwa, trying to give us names. We don't have names of tribes in that sense in Southern Cameroon. We have counties. We don't have anything like a Bamenda man. We have an Ngokutunja man. I am a Bamenda man. I went to school in Bamenda in the Northwest region. So, I want to say that, please, re listen. Now, the guys who are preaching these things, they are moving around and have already taken the necessary dispensation to ensure that these fools will be garried. This is a, an urgent and urgent matter. Because, you see, the government has tried every way to weaken us and they have not succeeded. And they are now using our own brothers to start preaching these issues, this divide and rule. But I want to say that Please, if you know Franklin Jume, pass this message to him that he's going to hear from me first from Yasuso. I wanted to forgive him, but I will no longer pardon him. He's going to hear from me. He will hear the news soon. Listen, listen. Let me say this. All chiefs, I want the chiefs to listen now. I want the chiefs to listen. Because you see this divide and rule that each time want to go, somebody can do something to try to disturb us. Excuse me. All the chiefs. Um, this thing concerns me particularly because I publish a list. I publish a list of some Boya chiefs. And that is why today I am going to call on a certain guy who says he's uh, General Yimfu. General Yimfu of the AS. You know, uh, there are things that cannot be done and cannot be condoled, cannot be accepted. If you read, you don't understand, ask the writer. And I want to say that I don't write in Spanish, I don't write in French, I don't write in Latin or whatever language, I don't write in any other Creole, I write in English, 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 because I'm, I'm an Anglo-Saxon journalist. So, if you try to use what I write,
to uh, unfortunately for you, you cannot edit what I write on my wall. I'm the only person who has a password to edit my stories. So, Eric Tatro did not write that chiefs in Boya or Paco should be arrested. That was never what was written. And I want all the chiefs who are listening to me, children of chiefs, princesses and princes, listen very attentively. Nobody has asked that your father be arrested. No. That list was sent out to inform those chiefs who were going to attend a meeting with the governor that they must boycott. And that if they had to attend that meeting, they would have mortgaged their freedom that they were going to be arrested if they attended that meeting. We do not put that list out there because we wanted to arrest those chiefs. No. No way. That did not happen. So tell Franklin Jume, tell uh, General Yimpu that he, he that they read with their with their legs and understand with their tongues. That they should use their eyes to read and use their brains to understand. That message is clear. Now, some chiefs have been arrested. I can authoritatively confirm to you that seven Boya chiefs have been arrested, which I have endorsed that arrest just like Magbarata did, based on the circumstances of the arrest. Now, no chief, no innocent chief will be arrested. No way. We will not support the arrest of the chiefs. As a matter of fact, I've spoken with the arrestors who have given me their words that these chiefs are doing well. So if your father has been arrested, the, your father is fine, somewhere kept, because investigations are ongoing. These chiefs have planted a lot of concoctions around FACO to prevent their own children who are fighting for the liberation of their land. Why? Because they were handpicked, some were handpicked by the administration, and they have the obligation to serve their master in Yaoundé. Now, if you come online to say something, that's why today I want to call the interim government to immediately, without delay, I use my voice as an activist, it's not an order, but I'm doing activism, to dismiss this non-entity called General Yimfu. I don't know what kind of general comes on air to counteract what the interim government says. That you will never see Churuma. Churuma cannot say something, and Colonel Bajek comes and says the opposite. The Secretary of Communication, Secretary Chris Anu, has said that Francophone must go. And all of us, he added his voice to mine because I support and I started on the crusader of the Francophone Must Go policy. And it is a very, very, very strong and powerful step towards uh, the survival and uh, success of our movement. Now, Secretary Chris Anu has come and endorsed that, and other activists have, have followed. Now, you have a general, somebody who stays somewhere in the diaspora calls himself General Yinfu, comes and says that it is not a fight against the Francophone. That general is stupid because I don't know who gave him the title of general. You are a general, you have to work with the communication team. So I want the interim government, the ASC, to dismiss this particular guy called Yinfu. He has no mandate to talk, con I can say contrary to what the ID says because I am an activist. I can propose, but you cannot, have, you cannot be in a government. Government is a chain. You cannot come and put a contrary communication to what your government has put out there. I can do that because I'm Eric Tato. I'm an activist. I don't belong to any group. Now, let us get this fact. This same Yunfu said that the chiefs, are, nobody has ordered the arrest of chiefs. They, they don't get mixed up because they now their secrets have been open in the air. And the police, if you join, you share extensively. We want everybody on board to get this message clean and clear. Because this divide and rule is something that these people think that they can use to disturb us, to confuse us until the whole elections in October. But it will not work. You know why it will not work? Because first and foremost, I, Eric Tato, I am going to ensure that the whole of Littoral, Douala, I will, I'm going to shut down Douala. I'm going, before the elections, you see things that will happen in Douala. I'm going, listen, you will see, I said I'm going to shut Douala down. Nobody's going to stop that. 
Douala will be shut down. So nothing is going to happen. The elections will not hold. It will not hold anywhere in Ambazonia because they have to concentrate to maintain the security in Douala. So let them know that fact that what they are playing with fire. They are playing with fire. Very big fire. And uh, listen, anybody that will stand on the way of this movement should be garried immediately. I mean, immediate garried. There's no joke about it. Now, if chiefs think that somebody wants to arrest them because they are chiefs, I want to tell you, your royal highnesses, that is a big lie. There is only one person who arrests the chiefs. That is Mr. Bia. Mr. Bia destroyed the palace of Oshie, burnt down another palace in Ngwa. And that chief of Ngwa is a former, is called Anangwa, which is a former general colonel in the Bia military. They also destroyed the house of the chief of Eshobi in Mampe Central, who is also the, the regent, who is also a former soldier. Go to the BLM, chiefs were arrested, who are soldiers and locked up. Let me tell you something. No Southern Cameroonian Restoration Force is arresting any chief. No. We are arresting chiefs that have modeled our movement. I want to say this. Seven chiefs in Paco Boya have been arrested. Some other chiefs will be arrested because those chiefs that have been arrested, they have told us what is going on and other chiefs have been implicated. Those other chiefs will be picked up in the days ahead. I will not give their names, but they will be picked up. No innocent chief, so long as you know nothing, you will not be picked up. I want to go to this issue of Bamenda, Graffi, and all of that nonsense that Franklin Juma is preaching. I want to say one thing, please. If you join, you share. Everybody, everybody, we have close to 1,000 people watching. As soon as you join, you share. We have 802 persons. We have just a few more to go to 1,000. So once you join, click the share button. That is your responsibility. Now, I want to say this, and listen very attentively to me. I have said this issue about Bamenda University, that the killing of those students did not take place inside the campus, no, or in the student hostels, no, it didn't. It didn't take place there. It took place in a Lesam hotel or nightclub where those students were having an after party or after exam party enjoyment and the military came there, dragged them out, and then after showing ID cards, identifying themselves as students, instead of the military to protect them, the military still shot and killed them. That is the highest crime that you can see on earth. With that said, students now have the responsibility to fight back. All the students, let me tell you the anecdote. You don't know. You know, the problem is that we stay quiet too much. Excuse me. Now, how many students are there in the University of Bamenda, University of Boya, in uh, 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 ENS Bambili, which was still University of Bamenda, though? What about students in Kumba? Okay, go to primary, to secondary schools, let's put from high school upwards. Who are those who are in the military? The people, there are even people who in primary school, most of them, especially the Nordins, who are in the military, they never went to school. They are benefiting from you know, from this political craze that Mr. Bia has put in place, this political mafia, most of them didn't go to school. Most of those Nordists are even those in the East, the South, in, and, and stuff like that. Even some of the Basab military guys, they didn't go to school. We are the only persons, Anglophones, who go to school. We go to so, so many schools, and then we end up not even having positions in the military. Now, why am I saying this? Now, how many students are there, Anglophone the students, in the University of Boya and University of Bamenda? If you put those two figures up, you add them together, you will now see that the number of students in these two universities is above the total number of military or soldiers that Bia has, from the warders to the police to the, to, the, to the bees to all the forces that Mr. Bia has. This invariably means that if one student were to mark one military man or one soldier, we would have killed all the soldiers who come to our land. So, the killing of these particular students in Bambili is an eye-opener to all students. You must, all the students must now 
hold weapons. It is your right. But see, let me tell you something. You see, I'm here in the U.S. and I call guns, weapons, without fear. The FBI is next door to me. The CIA is next year. My Facebook page now, I pay for my Facebook page. If you see National Telegraph is sponsored, it's from my pocket. I pay. So it means that my videos go very viral. A lot of people watch it. And when I say that, get guns. When I'm in the U.S., I'm not afraid. It means that it's not the wrong thing. Because in the U.S., you cannot say something that is wrong. You'll be arrested. And that is why I've told a lot of these people that they are wasting their time by trying to I say every time that go to the FBI and report. I'm telling you that what I tell you is the exact thing you should do. All students, all the students, you have to uh, put your population together. University uh, of Boya and uh, universities of Boya and Bamenda. High schools like GHS Mamfe, GBHS Bamenda. All those high schools, you people exceed 2 million times the soldiers. Now, Excuse me. If all the students were to get guns, weapons, and fight, I mean, if you don't fight, they'll kill many more students. It's not true that they started killing students. So this is a call for all students to pick up arms. It is your legitimate right. It is your right to self-defense. It is your right that is enshrined in the Second Amendment to the, United, to the Constitution of the United States. So you have to pick up those arms now or never. Now or never. All students, you have to declare any soldier a personal non grata. No soldier is supposed to pass around a university campus. It's supposed to end. See, listen, students should be deadlier than restoration forces. In fact, you should be worse than any best trained soldier. They cannot kill your brothers and you sit and watch. No! University of Bermuda students, rise up now! University of Boya students, rise up now! Those of you in Lise, Lise Moliko, rise up now. As you hear my voice, I speak wisdom into you that you have to fight this fight. Because if, listen, listen, I want you to imagine one thing. Imagine a slave that tried to run away. The slave has escaped, has gone up to 90% of his or her journey, of her escape route, and is caught by the master. What is going to happen? What is going to... See, do not fumble. Do not fumble. We have to fight this fight. Now, the responsibility lies on the arms and soldiers of the students. Every student who is getting my voice, every student, anyone, make sure you defend yourselves now. Go to restoration forces. Call your relatives abroad. Ask them. Ask them to ensure that they get you the best weapons possible. You are in, you are in Europe, America, in Asia, anywhere you are. Call your family back home. Ask your brothers what they need. Get them the weapon. It's their right to own, to bear arms. It is backed by the International Criminal Court. It is backed by the FBI, by the United States, by any country that is supporting the rights of self-determination and there's no country who does it. The only country that fights to kill people is Cameroon of Mr. Bia. So, the students must now understand that the, a war has been declared against them and they cannot continuously stay quiet. No, no, I have said no. Listen. I have told all the students, as you listen to my voice, get the weapons necessary for your self-defense. Ask your relatives abroad to adopt you. You know what to do. As they have killed your students, your, your colleagues, this is what you're going to do. You're going to start from Bambari. Listen. I want to tell you something. Listen very attentively. We don't need restoration forces to do this one. All students, from Bambili to Boya, to Kumba, to Limbe, if you, have, if you are a student, you have any teacher who is francophone, arrest that teacher. Arrest that teacher. You know where they stay. In fact, I want every student who is listening to this show, go to my world, take my WhatsApp number, 
exchange messages with me, intelligence, about where your teachers who are francophones, where they live. Tell me where they live. I'll get them arrested in the next 10 hours. Any francophone teacher, lecturer, still in the universities, they are the people who tell the military how you go about to come and kill you. The, 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 the vice chancellor of the University of Bamenda is simply a scapegoat. And I'm sure that very soon the regime in Yaoundé will want to sack him. But that notwithstanding, no incident took place on campus or in the hostel. It took place in the nightclub, in a position where the military was supposed to protect students. But what did the military do? The military instead killed those students. He killed the students even after showing their ID cards. You go to a Lisam nightclub, you move students, you move students out of there, shoot and kill them. Well done, military. Now, students, listen. Any student who is getting my voice this moment, please, if you join, you share extensively. I don't, we, have, we have people watching. If you come online, some people are unable to share because you have just come to the, to the, to the video. You go back to my page, you click share before you continue watching. You can come out and click share, then you continue watching. That's what we're supposed to do. Because this message is important. We have foot soldiers and students who are supposed to get the directives on what to do. If the military has started killing students in this manner, students have to help the fight in order to ensure that the restoration comes fastest. We have already restored our independence. But it's delaying because a lot of people are simply dragging their legs. And so if you're watching as a student, you have to ensure this. If you're in Bambili, you have to carry everything that belongs to the government. Because that is your responsibility. You have to shut down every government structure as a student. And you have to disrupt the functioning of the school. Because you cannot go to school and they come and kill you. So every student, listen, every student who is following, this is what you're going to do. We are going to ensure that all francophones who are teaching there, they should be arrested. Exchange me intelligence in the, uh, uh, regarding francophone, francophone teachers, all francophone students in Cas Bambili, francophone students in the University of Boya, francophone students in the, in the University of Bamenda, francophone students in the Government Teachers Training College in Kumba, all francophone students in Polytech, francophone students and teachers in uh, Pan Africa. In all the schools, please give me my WhatsApp is there. Exchange this information with me. I want to ensure that I'm going to shut down all those schools. There's no way they can kill students and francophones stay quiet and they continue to attend our schools. In their own parts, they are arresting our people. Go and look at the judge in Bafusam. Thousands of our compatriots are in Bafusam. Yes, some just left court two days ago. And you go to other parts. Even in the East, there are Anglophones that have been locked up in jails. So I have to make sure that in my name as Eric Tato, with the support of other Amazonian activists and warriors on the ground, we will arrest all, start with the Francophone students in our higher institutions, and all their teachers, they will get arrested this moment from, from Monday, which is tomorrow, people will start getting the news. And even those who, in Manfe, who say that they want to disrespect ghost town, if you set your foot out, listen, go, I'm talking and mixing up because I don't want to forget anything. Ghost Town tomorrow has to be 2 billion percent effective because I have given firm instructions that anybody, especially in my county, and in Limbe and Boya, Tico, that anybody around Commissioner Ben in Bamenda as well, that will step foot outside for 10 seconds, if you is my mother, the person will be in, listen, they will carry the entire person. It's not part. The person will be carried. So that is a fact. I'll come back to the ghost town issue. Now, I have said that students, look at the administrative building in your area. Look at all those government offices. Look at any francophone teacher, francophone students, all those people who are staying quiet while you are being killed. Identify them. Tell us, give me information. They will not know. Share with me on my WhatsApp. If people from the Ministry of Defense can share information with me, you should not be afraid to share. Once you give me that information, 
as soon as I have that information, I will move. You will just stay quiet and begin to see action. All those people, listen. Any francophone teacher who is listening to me now, start packing your bags. Francophone students, start leaving. Start leaving because if I arrest you, I will carry your one hand. I will carry it immediately because they are killing students. And you, listen, this is not a joke. This is not a joke. Look at the family in Belo, in Njini Kijen. They killed a man and his two young children and dumped into the river. Go to Open Tibet. They killed a man and his entire family, a teacher, an Andropon teacher. After killing students, they came and killed a teacher in Open Tibet and they killed some more pastors in Batibo. No, listen. Any Francophone who is still on my land will be guaranteed. Yes. Tell anybody that is head speech and accept it. If you know what is war, you will not open your mouth and talk nonsense. They cannot kill students in that manner. Kill teachers and people think we should be capping. It is, listen, it is not going to happen anymore in Amber Land. And any of them, any of them, guarantee them at once. So share this information and we'll move, take measures, take measures to ensure that all these people leave our land. I will take that responsibility. So any teacher of Pankopon already, it is a war. It is a civil war now. If Bia has not known, they are killing you people. Let me give you now the information from the Ministry of Defense. I think we have close to 1,000 people watching. Now, this is the information from the Ministry of Defense. They came out of a meeting in Ban. In Ban is in Yaoundé. And please, share this extensively. I beg of you. They came from a meeting in Ban. And the Minister of Defense has given new instructions to all generals to shoot. Listen, they will be breaking into houses now. It is as bad as that. So some of you have to change your iron, your doors to iron doors immediately. All on your phones. Change into iron doors and then make technical outlets where they will not understand, where you can move in the night when they want to break into the iron doors. Because the minister has instructed the soldiers, I want this, listen, you are getting this and what I like about me is that when I say something, people who understand take it seriously. Some few people still doubt, but and those who get the information and don't take it seriously, they'll they get they'll get killed. Now they have said that they should means if they come to a family, that's what I've said in open Tibet, they have to be shooting members. It means that you get up, they want to make sure that everybody's scared. So the election will hold. And when they kill all angle phones in their numbers. Francophones will come and vote now. That is the instruction from the meeting in Ban. It's a special meeting held today, Sunday. And why did they hold that meeting? To instruct so generals will now pass the information down to their soldiers, to their, to their contingents, to ensure that it is executed. They will kill any Anglophone. When they come to your household, they will shoot as many people as possible. They will not spare anybody. It means they have said that they should shoot from babies as young as five to any age. It means that in the next week, this week coming, the massacre is going to be bad in Anglophone Cameroon. The place, the Minister of Defense has instructed, it's, it's a strict and firm instruction that the soldiers are going to follow. And so, now, you have to move, if there is a way that you want to move your family, you move your family, it's important. But people want to stay back, you must get iron doors, and then you must ensure that you don't go out at night to pee. If your house is that kind of house that you go and pee or poo in the night, don't do it again. You get out at five, you will not come back. They have given instruction that people should be killed indiscriminately. Why? Because Mr. Pia wants to ensure that he stays in power. Now, this kind of message will only tell you one thing. It only tells you one thing, that the regime has known that we have, we have already won our fight. And they want to ensure that they kill everybody before we get this independence. But they know that the movement can never be killed. So they want to discourage. That is why, listen, so they, they said ghost town, you see, they start giving flyers out to confuse people while they are holding their meeting in van to do what? To kill all our brothers. And those of us in the diaspora, we have the responsibility to put everybody on track. The environment is clear that shoot and kill indiscriminately at any anglophone. 
Before that is going to happen, this is what should be done. I'll go back to the people on the ground. Those of you Anglophones and Bazunias on Grand Zero. The first thing that we have to do, we have people that we must carry. One of those, one of such persons is Franklin Jume, who preaches divide and rule. They have been paid by the government to do the job they are doing. I have another Nikon Poop in, uh, from Kembong, they call Bate Johnson, who is also doing this kind of games on social media. I want all of them to listen. Why the Ministry of Defense has instructed that our people be killed starting this week, I also want to say that our people have the mechanisms to counteract this. How are you going to counteract this? You have to tell Mr. Pia that no, Mr. President. What did I say? I said no. You have to tell Mr. Pia that no, Mr. President. You are not the only one who has monopoly to kill. You are not the only one that can kill us. How can you do this? You can do this by making sure that every, you know, francophone in your community be carried as well. They, listen, that is the only thing that's going to change the dynamics of the game. When you start guarding the Francophones, they will not stand up and cry. Yes, they could be fighting between Anglophone and Francophone. There's no doubt about that. That is why we, that's what we want. So that there will be commotion and the international community will probably now intervene. Because as it stands, as it stands, we have lost at least 4,000 of our compatriots. And many more can die in the days ahead because people on Grand Zero fail to take instructions. The instruction is simple. If you already started, listen, let me tell you the best thing to do. Anybody who is standing there and you live in a neighborhood, block by block, look at your block. Who is your brother? Is your brother, your, your brother and Anglophone? Okay, you don't, don't touch foreigners. The only problem we have here we have with Francophones who have stayed in our land and are killing us, they are not talking. I've started with the students in, uh, in Bambili that you have to kick out all Francophone teachers as well as students. The same with University of Boya. That is your legitimate right. That is exactly what you should do. Because if you don't do that, they will have to kill you before you realize it. I go now to the situation about divide and rule. Uh, this Nikon Poop said that the Bamenda people have invaded Southwest. And they want to kill. Listen, please. This message is very crucial for this movement. They want to kill everybody in the Southwest. It's the Bamenda people, the Grafi people, uh, the, these people. That's somebody who insults Bangwa people. He insults everybody because he has been told to do that. It's a, it's a communication. It's a communication bomb that will not work because some of us are here. It cannot work. I want to just make some more illusion and make a small anecdote. Now, listen. Barista Agbobala is from Ewele. Ewele is in Manu, it's in the southwest. Sisiku, no, from Bakwele, rather. Bakwele in Emojo, that's where Barista Agbobala comes from. Sisiku Ayokabe is from Ewele in Manu, in Upper Bayan. Akwanga Ebenezer, Akwanga Ebenezer, Dr. Akwanga, is from Bechati in Lebialem. Akosin Pauline Jale is from Ndiani. Eric Tato is from Kendem in Manu. Tapang Aigo is from Mebialem. Mark Barita is also part from Manu. Now, Chris Anu is from Mebialem. Dr. Sako is from Fako. I want you to listen very attentively. All the major Ashu Kingsley is from Manu. Now, all the major frontline leaders or activists in this movement are Southwesterners. They are not Bamenda people. Let me now use the word. They are not. They are not. Okay, you have Dr. Cho Ayaba, who is Bamenda, or from the Northwest. Mark Balatetu is also from the Northwest by extension. Now, how can Franklin Jume say that the Bamenda people are invading Southwest. No, I'm not a Bamenda man per se. I'm a Southern Cameroonian from the Southern zone who, who has taken upon himself, who has understood that 
There is need to fight for freedom. And I'm fighting to liberate my people. There is no such thing like a Pamenda man or a Manu man. It doesn't exist. I've, I've just named some names here. All those of you chiefs of FACO that you're watching. Is Sisiku a Pamenda man? Is Sisiku a Pamenda man? Is Agobala a Pamenda man? No. These are people who are from Southern Cameroon who do not know the divide and rule that one Nikon poop is there trying to cause. We are we, the Southwesterners, we love our Bamenda brothers. We love our Northwestern brothers. We are in no conflict. We will never be because all the chiefs are one. When, when Mr. Bia was coming to Boya, it was not a matter of the fact that a Bamenda chief will come and read this, or a Northwest chief, or a Frank of or a Southwest chief, no. The Anglophone chiefs, they came together and they, they pondered on what to do. Our, our, our chiefdoms have been very unified from time immemorial. From when we were West Cameroon, we have had the House of Chiefs, like you all know. So there is nothing like a, they, they are fighting FACO chiefs, like they are invading. No, that is a big lie. We simply said that we're going to arrest, like we have arrested. They, were, they have arrested chiefs all over. Even councillors have been arrested in Ginicom. It is not only in the Southwest. It is a movement. It's a revolution. It is not a romance. And we have said that anybody who will stand on the way of this movement would be garried. And it is not against any chief. That is why I come open online to say that if there is any politics that is involved, we will condemn it. If they arrest a chief because of chief tension dispute, we will condemn it. Like I did in the case of, of Aquaya, like I've done in other cases. There is no way, there is no way ever that Southwest and Northwest are going to have a problem. No. The majority, 90% of the activists, they come from the Southwest. That is why they have their groups on the ground and the few who come from the Northwest, they are also doing their best to ensure that we shut down some places in the Northwest. So it is not about the Bamenda man wanting to drive, a, a, the graphic man wanting to drive a, 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 the Southwest man from Boya to take over Boya. That is a big lie. We are one. We are one. Oh, we are together. We are one. Southwest, Northwest, we are together. We are one. Oh, we are together. We are one. There is no body, nobody who can separate us. This is a collective fight, a collective movement. And go and tell Yaounde that me, Eric Tato, I have said that they have failed. Look at this. You see this? This, this is Southwest, Northwest. We are one. We are together like horses. We move together. There is no way that they are going to separate us. We look at each other. We watch each other's back. We are one forever and we remain one. That is why we are fighting as the Federal Republic of Ambazonia. We are not fighting as separate people. These horses, this one is not going this way and this one is going this way. No. They are looking at each other, keeping each other together. That is our movement. There is no way a Nikon Poop will come and say that uh, Bamenda. No, there is nothing like a Bamenda man. It doesn't exist. I am a Bamenda man. I am a Manu man. I'm all around. I'm an Ambazonian. That is me. So forget the noise. Nonsense. Now, we have had information that there have been serious thefts in the Manfe men market. And I want to tell all the people from Manfe listening to me that that particular, when you hear that they are stealing, is the military. Because from uh, the Express Union building, where there's Arikam, where they used to sell guns, to that Samson John Street, Samson John Street, right down, that area is blocked by the military. And nobody comes out after 6 p.m., 8 p.m., nobody's out there. The only people who go, like they do elsewhere, the only people who can go into the markets 
and steal those things are the military people. The military people, they are the people who go to steal. They go to steal our things in our markets. If you want to think that I'm joking, just put some sweet thing in one of those things that you sell and keep somewhere. They'll eat and you come and see military people dead in the market. So our armed soldiers do not, they don't touch anybody's property. They ask and give voluntarily. Those who threaten you, call you, they are not armed soldiers. They are still those who have been paid and hired by the Republic. With that said, we, we want to say that the Boya chiefs now know that we don't have any issue against them. The Fako chiefs now know that we don't have any issues against them. And all Southwest chiefs and Northwest chiefs, they are one. The reason why a lot of things are happening in the Southwest is because Boya is nearest, and that is the capital. It will also happen in the Northwest like it's happening in the Southwest. It is a war strategy, and it is being led by the interim government headed by Southwest now. So it is not a matter of a Northwest man trying to take over Fako. No, that is because Franklin Juma is crying. He's crying because Okala Belai boasted that nothing will happen in Fako. They are crying because the last place that is going to be our final destination is almost falling down. You know when London Bridge is falling down, that's why they are crying. So we will not relent. We will fight and fight until we get back our country. Now, I want to end this show with a reminder of the ID cards issue, you know, and then I'll talk a little bit on the meeting in Ban. I hear people, a lot of people are complaining about ID cards. And uh, the truth is that plenty of us have still not understood. I've pleaded severally that we should not temper with the ID cards of our citizens. Please, restoration forces, do not seize or destroy ID cards of serving Cameroonians. Allow them with their ID cards so that they would use in running their day-to-day -day activities. But when you meet these other Francophones, they don't have the right to use those ID cards in our land. Seize the ID cards only from Francophones and destroy the Francophones and Francophones. Destroy all the ID cards and send them packing back to their land. If they hesitate to go, make sure you guarantee them. You guarantee them and don't joke. When I say guarantee them, they should be guaranteed. That is your responsibility. Because there is no way you can sit and clap your hands while you are killing your brothers. With that said, I go back to this very pertinent meeting in Van who, that has continuously touched me in the heart because of the plight of the people and the, 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 the second meeting that has now instructed soldiers to kill all our civilians. I want to say it again and to repeat it one more time. Everybody who is a Southern Cameroonian on Grand Zero, listen very attentively to this final instruction before I go. Today, look at the date. Today is Sunday, July 15, 2018. Mr. Bia watched his ninth welcome. Mr. Bia came to power in 1982, 6th November, when Italy had just beaten West Germany 3-1 in the World Cup Finals. And uh, that was, of course, in Spain, in Bernabeu. Now, Mr. Bia was Prime Minister at the time. If you put that together, it's almost the 10th World Cup. One president has watched 10 World Cup Finals for four years. You can imagine how long that person has been in power. And today, instead of solving a very serious matter that started like a biscuit, Mr. Bia is ordering his ministers to hold second meetings in Ban, in Yaoundé, to plan the assassination of many more of our brothers. This is why it's not going to happen. All the people in the diaspora are listening to my voice this moment. I told you that adopt your people so that they will know exactly what to do. Adopt everybody, every member of your family. Just know that if you have any member of your family who is on Grand Zero without guns and weapons and ammunition, the place is as good as death. So you have to ensure that as you are in the diaspora, get everything straight up. Get everything straight up. Send them the little money you can send to them. They know how to get these weapons and they have to keep them in the houses to defend themselves. I say this because Mr. Bia has taken upon himself to ensure that he kills everybody. He kills every Southern Cameroonian 
within his sight, within his reach, because he wants to be president in, come the 7th of October, come rain cup shine. However, however, let me say this, that there will be no elections in Southern Cameroon. I want to say that if you're an Elecam worker, if you're a delegate, it's a branch head of Elecam in any subdivision or a divisional delegate, a divisional branch head in any of the divisions in all the 13 counties in Southern Cameroon. If you must hold that election, we will ensure because it, it is clear that we will now go to your residence and make sure that we guide them because if you insist on holding elections, it means that you have a primary motive of ensuring that you empower the same regime to come and continuously kill our people. So it is going to be a war and not a romance. Quote me anywhere. My name is Eric Tato. God bless you. Have a wonderful Sunday. Stay blessed. And don't forget that you have the responsibility to buy enough arms and ammunition for your family back home. Stay blessed.